Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Lauren. This is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Tonight, it's going to be very focused on off road campers. I'm very excited. It's been the topic we've talked about a lot in the past, Lauren. So it's going to work out perfectly. Um, it's as always, this is fascination of years <laughs> at this point. Well, they're like tiny homes that you just tow behind. And then even though I recently purchased a rooftop tent, I will get into all this later. No, no, we'll talk about it all later. I'm not, I don't want to ruin it. So yeah, we're still spread across the country tonight. Ross is on the East coast. I'm in the Midwest and Lauren's in Nevada. Nevada. Okay. I didn't know. I, Las Vegas, Nevada. I mean, you did tell us you had got back to Nevada, but I just yes. wanted to make yes. sure <laughs> just in case. Um, the actual skillet of the earth right now. I was to say, yeah, where you have told us it's hot. Um, yeah. Ross, do you have any updates? That's me. Um, yeah, a couple quick things. <laughs> um, if my stupid computer will load so I can look at my notes and remember what I wanted to talk about. Okay, um, nothing interesting on the GX front. Still got some parts sitting in the garage. Um, it is... <laughs> No it's also been hot. hot here. Yeah, it's not as bad as uh, as Vegas, but I mean, it was it was like mid nineties, and the real feel was in the one ten range. Um, and our air quality from the Canadian wildfires is is bad again. So, dude, it even got down here the other day. I was like, why is it so hazy? And I was like, that's got to be some wildfire smoke. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it's not good, you know. And I know that up there, they're they're saying that it's all okay, and they have to do this kind of controlled semi-controlled burn every few years to keep vegetation normalized but um yeah it sucks down here you know as somebody with asthma it is terrible brutal so (laughs) alexis has stuff that needs to uh needs to go on to it and i'm desperately hoping that this heat and air disaster breaks once uh once school wraps in august and i can get after all this stuff see i I love that right now you're counting down the days of your school being done and i'm counting down the days of my kids going back because i'm already (laughs) sick of them let's let's clarify your kids are still in the uh in the the greatest times of their lives with zero responsibility right you know i mean my life is pretty great i really can't complain about anything but But working from um, home with three out of four kids being home full-time is not ideal yeah that's uh Surprised you haven't? Nope, can't say that on, on nope. any platform. Okay, uh, <laughs> other news: the uh, the Polaris Scrambler is staying for a few extra months. Thank you to Polaris. Uh, gonna have some more stories about that. I wrote something for Hooniverse about a suspension. Um, it has mm-hmm. crazy Walker Evans racing suspension on it with remote reservoirs and a billion different things of adjustability. That um, that what's um. The Lotus guy, Colin, uh, I want to say Mockery, but he's the guy. Colin Mockery is the guy from Who's Line, yeah. (laughs) No, um, Colin Chapman, is that what you're looking for? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) The trope is like, if you give them the ability to adjust it, they'll adjust it wrong. Right. So so I just, I turn the dials to soft on a couple things. um, And and otherwise, I'm not going to touch like preload or, or, you know, anything crazy. Um, But yeah, that thing's hanging around for a few extra months. Uh, and then the only other interesting thing that's happened since we spoke about this time last week is I've been driving the Alpina B8 Grand Coupe, <laughs> which is... Uh, that's a mouthful. It's, it's a mouthful. Um, and it is technically an Alpina and not a BMW because it has it comes from the Alpina factory. Um, it is... The way I've been describing it to people is that it is an M5 for somebody who wants to push the scale a little more towards style and presence and curb appeal um, and just like, you know, an exquisite experience instead of just like, fuck you, psycho death machine speed, like the M5 comp is. Um, But yeah, it is an exceptionally pretty car. And those wheels, man, nobody makes better wheels than Alpina. Look at that. It's just incredible, (laughs) you know, they're so good. This is where looks are subjective and I don't like the style of wheel, but that's really? just, I, I know that I am in the minority. I have yeah. accepted it. I'm not going to fight anybody over it. I, I can okay. see how people enjoy these wheels. They're just not my mm-hmm. cup of tea. I totally understand. Do you like 
the wheels that were on the B7 that was out in like 2008. I they were don't they were the same remember. wheel but with like a deep dish block. So they were, the spokes were set back from the face a little bit. Um, I'm I'm wondering if you don't like them because it's it's flush, flush. with the tire profile. Um, um, no, I actually like those worse. So the, I would prefer <laughs> these. Yeah, I would okay. prefer these. Noted. Noted. All right. Because well, this this is just a style of wheel where those are just like a turbo fan isn't the right right phrase, but uh, it it is wild. Um, yeah, it's see a if lot. I can I mean, share this tab instead. Like that that go. offset. Not not ideal to me. Just love them. You also, love them. How <laughs> well has that car aged? The car looks really the, good, actually. The 7 Series yeah. from, like, the Bangle era. Yeah. Man, that thing has held up so much better than anybody expected. I, I so feel funny. like Bangle gets shit on all the time, but, like... Of course. They don't look terrible anymore, like... It's the uh, the WRX effect, where every Subaru looks better once the next one comes out, <laughs> because they just make it look worse every time. Yeah, the modern um, ones are just trash. Yeah, just just... I say trash for like I could never afford one anyway. Like, <laughs> oh, a BMW or or a uh, or a WRX. Either at this point, like even a yeah, WRX is like what fifty k plus. Like, no, 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 no. WRX is like thirty to thirty five. I think. Shut up. If you you get the GT with the, it's a CVT only, and it and it has like adaptive shocks. It's like forty four, but it's also only like two hundred and. 70 horsepower you know which hasn't right. changed in which that's not super concerning to me i don't no, no um but speaking of horsepower the alpina b8 has 612. i was <laughs> so to say i know slow. it's a lot <laughs> yeah it's 612 horsepower 590 tour um the thing weighs 4800 pounds do you even notice the weight or does it just feel yes. poised um our roads are terrible so like there's some spots where even the Raptor got thrown around. So over those, it does like a, like a, you know, okay. wavy kind of motion. A um, wavy motion. Yeah, I mean, this thing's like, the perfect buyer for this is, you know, is going from LA to Vegas overnight, twice a month. Houston definitely to not, Austin. Yeah, definitely not running anything in the trunk or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a pretty car. And that's it. That's the Sweet. It's Those are fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? It's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So it's twelve grand less than my first house. Purchased like to me. 20, 20 plus years ago, Ross. Like, yeah, or not right. even twenty, like fifteen years ago. Yeah. yeah. We don't talk about East Coast and Midwest house prices enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, just stab me in the heart. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's it. What's happening with you? I literally have nothing. I've been attending kid youth baseball games. Um, the house has been, we had a, we had an, an incident back in January. We are so close <laughs> to now uh, recovering and being put back together. And like our house has been in a state of disrepair since January. And so like, it's almost done. Like it, there's literally two more things on the list and i think i know for sure one can be solved in a day i'm not quite sure if the second thing could be one or two days and then it would be at a point where putting putting things back like i i haven't parked in the garage since march uh sarah has not parked in the garage since march because we've had so much stuff out of the house to do repair work so now that everything is starting to head back in uh, we've we've cycled some things out as we've purchased some new stuff. We were like, nope, we're tired of that old stuff. We're not putting it back in. So, okay. yeah, the I I was Lauren, I was telling Ross before like we purchased uh, end tables for our bed. Like we've never had. <laughs> I don't want to say like nice or fancy ones, but like we have used the end tables for my couch the year after I graduated college uh, when I purchased those up until today and so that was like 20 years ago <laughs> that those end tables yeah <laughs> so big big upgrade in our house 
Uh, but let's talk about your mobile houses. <laughs> mobile yeah. houses. Yeah. 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 So Lauren, why don't you give us your elevator pitch? Tell us who you are, um, what you do, and all that fun stuff. Make us yeah, no, it's it <laughs> good. <laughs> Appreciate you guys uh, letting me join the chat here tonight. Um, so yeah, I'm Lauren with Exford Campers. We are a boutique uh, off-road and overlanding camper dealership with an office in Las Vegas and now recently opened up our shop in Knoxville, Tennessee. So we uh, we exclusively focus on the off-road and overlanding niche. We carry some of the best products out there. We import a few brands from Australia. And uh, just what we like to do is help people understand and learn about the off-grid and overlanding lifestyle while towing a trailer. So it's a lot of fun. We have a great time with it. So we and have a lot of different places we could go here. Well, Ross, Ross, you have a you have hundred questions. I know you want well, to this, fire away. This, well, I was going to start with the reason I met Lauren was on the Rogue Overlane Rally mm -hmm. where he was mm -hmm. towing an expedition trailer uh, and he went down just about everything that everybody else did and up everything that everybody else did too. Uh, so that's how I, so not only does he that's sell them, he uses them and knows what he's yes. doing and didn't wreck anything. So that was, this is my little... <laughs> Well, qualifier <laughs> you are uh, you're living the life that you preach that's good yeah yeah that was quite a trip it was it was a lot of fun to be with those guys um uh, uh nick you know reached out to me and asked if we'd want to participate and sponsor and so we're like heck yeah let's go for it um at the time i didn't realize i'd be the only trailer out there <laughs> yeah so with, uh, 30 plus people in, in this in this uh in this off-road trip uh we were the only trailer but being a being a trailer dealer it was like hey we can't we can't show up and sponsor the event without uh without towing something so we went for it and the crew was awesome everyone you know was accommodating certainly there's some different changes with with towing a trailer uh with what you have to do on a trail but uh they did great everyone everyone was awesome out there so what trailer did you bring with you and what did you pull it with? So, and for the listeners, yeah. if you want to hear more about the, uh, the Rogue Rally, you, we have multiple episodes Chris <laughs> recorded from there. We've talked about it before and after. So I'm yeah, pretty sure ones. Lauren's truck and trailer is in the background of the entire podcast that I did with the Rogue <laughs> Leader guys. Yeah. Cause I just, that is I just set up my little table next right to there. my truck and that's where I had parked that night. So yeah. <laughs> well done. Well no, done. it's, it's good. We uh, so I, I took out the is a 2023 Expedition Voyager. This is a uh, a great trailer built out of Salt Lake City, 100% uh, built in the U.S. Um, all aluminum, you know, construction. Uh, they built their own proprietary suspension this past year, which is a release for 23. So, you know, this was a fun kind of a, a trial for us to really push the limits of this trailer. Um, you know, we had done some research on what the trail was going to be like. And, um, you know, this part right here of, of Wipeout Hill on the seven mile rim was certainly, you know, put the trailer to the test. I, I felt really comfortable with what the trailer could handle with the suspension and the clearance and the departure angle we have on it. It was more about the driving and the full size truck that was towing it. So I was a uh, towing with a, a, a power wagon. Power so wagon. a lot of, a lot of length Dude, there, but, that's um, like 45 feet worth of truck. And <laughs> But the good news is it's all downhill right there. So you're getting down one way or the other. Um, but uh, some great spotting and, um, you know, had a great time out there. But trailer handled well. I mean, it's fantastic. A little bit of scraping right here on this point uh, on the on the front tongue jack. But, you know, as we come off the ledge and drop the rear end down, nothing scraped off the rear. So uh, I did really well. And I don't even think this is actually the hardest part. This is probably the most intimidating part of the trip, but there were some some pretty big ledges earlier on that we were up and down that really kind of uh, forced that suspension to work. And so this was this was a fun part of it, but really I think there were some 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 more dramatic pieces of it as well. So it was a it was a great trip overall. We had a fun time with that crew. So how did you get into this? Have you been in off-roading your whole life and then just kind of expanded from there? You know, I, I've been more more on the outdoor side in general. I grew up in a small town near Yosemite, um, up in the central uh, central California area, and did a lot of backpacking and hiking and fishing up in the Sierra Nevadas. Um, so out, you know, out in the outdoors, I got into off-roading, you know, in, in college and, and after that at a Nissan Titan at the time, did some stuff like that. But we got into traditional RVing first. And so my family, we, we bought a big 28 foot, you know, Forest River 
traditional uh, travel trailer with a slide out, bunks and everything, you know, and did that for a while and just mm-hmm. found that where I wanted to go and what was happening to that trailer just wasn't wasn't ready for it. So uh, we started looking at the off-road class. This is before overlanding is really a common turn, uh, but got into the off-road trailers. There was a few products on the market and that's what prompted me to get into it. So, um you know, I, you know, I, when we looked and bought our first off-road trailer, we looked around for quite a while, traveled around the country and looked at different dealers. And there really wasn't a dealer at the time that focused on this niche. And so I uh, started to think about it as a business and, you know, fast forward to 2020, the pandemic hits, I was without a job for a while. I was like, well, now's the time. So let's, let's start our off-road uh, trailer dealership and, and kick it off. So we launched in June of 2020 as uh, things were starting to open back up and just kind of uh, took off from there. Cool. How do you, uh, how do you pick and choose which companies you work with? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So um, there's, there's a lot of product out there on the market and just in the last two, three years since we started, it's, it's, uh, it's grown even more. <laughs> and, and so it does, it does get more difficult, but you know, we're, we're hyper-focused <clears throat> on certain types of trailers um, that really drive a very high quality experience for the consumer. Um, And so we have a a variety of products that are built both here in the US, uh, one out of Canada, and then three in Australia. And so we're looking at really the quality of the construction, starting with the chassis, the suspension and how it's built. Most of our trailers, many of them are, are uh, you know, have, have zero wood construction in them. They all have, you know, independent suspension, articulating hitches, um, and really designed to take a beating. Um, so that's what we're looking for. When we started, we had a lot of customers ask us about the Australian models and the Australian brands that are out there. And so uh, early on, we started to look into that and we were able to partner now with uh, three different brands that we import from Australia which is Australian off-road. This is the Odyssey you're looking at here. Um, and then also uh, lifestyle campers and, and track trailers. So we import those in and people like some of the, the build quality and some of the unique design capabilities of, of those Australian brands. Have you found that, I mean, because the Australian I love campers, it so much. everybody <laughs> listening to the show has probably seen or, or heard of four-wheel drive 24-7 and like, you know, Ronnie Dom, all those guys in yeah. Australia. Um, have you seen a noticeable difference in features or build quality between the Australian products and what, what comes just from domestic companies? You know, it's, it's interesting because there, there are some fantastic companies in the U S that make really, really great high end trailers. And then you have, um, then you have us, the Australian stuff and there's a variety of them too, that are really good. And then some just kind of average. And so you, you have it across the board, no matter what, I think what the, the brands that we've selected in Australia, they've all been doing it for a long time. And so they, they bring to the table 20 years of history to 25 to 30 years of history doing this. And so there are refinements on them that some newer manufacturers sometimes don't, you know, uh, they don't, they just don't have the experience yet. Um, but that, that's not to say there's not great product across the board because there really is. Um, but you know, uh, as you kind of get into it, certainly there are some details with a lot of these, uh, that are really well done that we appreciate. Um, but there's also a commitment to the customer, how they're working with us, their interest in the U S market, um, how they support us and everything to make sure that they're the right fit for the U S as well. Hmm. So, Interesting. and then Interesting. we also see a lot of these, you know, trailers out there, and this is what's happening right now at the market is there's a lot of imports from across the world and they all maybe look Australian, but maybe they're not, you know, and so trying sure. to help customers, uh, sort through that and figure out, you know, what's good about them. Um, what to look look out for and that sort of thing is is important, you know, because it, it does become a very confusing process for a lot of consumers that are mm-hmm. in research mode and trying to figure out what's the best fit for them. Yeah. So then, I uh, I know Chris wanted to ask this, but I'm pulling it out from under him. What are uh, <laughs> what kind of things are your absolute must have necessities when you look for or sell a trailer? Yeah. I mean, for what we look for in the brand, like I said, you know, it's really, it's really how they're built. Can they handle the, the rugged terrain, um, you know, with the suspension, the chassis, how it's designed, 
uh, the body panels, things like that. Yeah. Um, but what we spend more time talking about really is the lifestyle for the customer, because um, it doesn't have to be super rugged. You know, it just because it's super rugged or the most capable trailer out there doesn't mean it's the best for that user. And so, you know, uh, there's a lot of trailers out there that, you know, um, that you can get into um, that you just have to find the right fit. And so what we do with our customers is really understand what their lifestyle is about. What are their goals with going off road or off grid? Um, most of our trailers are many times they're used still in campgrounds and RV parks. And that's OK. Mm -hmm. People might want to do that, but they want a really well built trailer that's going to last a lifetime. Other people, yeah, they're full timers. They're hardcore explorers. They're going to go nuts with it. They're going to do some of the, some of these rugged trails, and they need it to hold up. So it's really about trying to find that lifestyle. And you know, whether it's uh, you know you want stand up room inside to put your clothes on in the morning, or you have to have a bathroom with plumbing, you know, or you have to have garage height, you know, because you need to park and store it somewhere. Yeah, you know, things like that. We really kind of dig into. Do you have a family? Is it a growing family? Are the kids going to be moving out? You need to accommodate them now, but two years down the road, you want to get rid of that rooftop tent and keep it light. You know, you want to tow with a, you know, a Jeep Wrangler versus a power wagon, you know, things like that we get into oh, and help them understand really what's the best fit for their lifestyle. I saw a, a, a JL Wrangler Unlimited Sport towing a Tracer something trailer and I looked it up and it's, it's like, it's like 44 or 4,500 pounds dry. And the yeah. Jeep's towing capacity is thirty five hundred, and yeah. that is like pushing it. And you it see it squat. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was honestly scary. Um, yeah, yeah. We we we're driving down the freeway all the time. I I look at my wife and she, I just start shaking my head, and she looks around and she sees the same thing, and she she knows what I'm thinking because I say it all the time. Like, what is that vehicle doing towing that trailer? Either from a mismatch in size, you know, or just like coolness factor and and what they're doing like we've seen these we've seen these decked out you know gladiators towing a traditional rv i'm like okay maybe that's what they want and that's great but do they know there's other options do they know that they can have a trailer that can keep up with what that gladiator can do with 38 inch tires on it you know so right. it's it's kind of fun to kind of take a look at that um a lot of people still are new to this part of the industry for so long, they've never known that there's options out there. They didn't know that you can get a really cool off-road overlanding trailer that you can get out there and push the limits with. And so if you haven't seen them before, you haven't been to an expo, you haven't done this type of stuff, you just don't know because traditional RV shops don't carry these types of products. And so just trying to get the word out, you know, getting them to see these things and get them to experience and test them for the first time is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really crazy. I mean, just the the variety the proliferation over the last few years like you said since the pandemic and just to see like the learning curve too of yeah people. like the guy with the gladiator you know who's got something yeah. totally wrong for him yeah um, but yeah it's it's a weird world um, yeah wh where do you find most of your customers are their sales call you know any interest comes from is it can I take a guess? Yeah. You know, our, our customer base is so widespread and it's, it's what's fun about this industry. Um, and so, you know, people come in from all walks of life, all geographies, all demographics, um, you know, whether it's a, you know, young family starting out that maybe rents a home, but wants to buy the trailer because, you know, they, they, this is the lifestyle they want or a retiree who maybe, you know, has been living or traveling a lot in a large, you know, class A that now wants to get off the grid and do more adventurous type travel. Um, we have it all. Uh, we have single moms, you know, uh, to anyone else out there. So it's a lot of fun. But what they all experience or kind of what I guess what they all share in this experience is this idea of being remote and being capable to be off grid, to get away from the campgrounds if they want to, to be able to explore. And so it doesn't matter where they come from or their age bracket or anything else it's like hey let's go find a trail and let's go explore having that sense of adventure uh, to get out there and do it and maybe they think they want to but they don't know how yet and they kind of like hey we've been doing the campground thing but we're kind of getting a little more adventurous it's perfect you know we can show them the rope show them what to do uh we do runs together take them out on trails 
And then it only takes a couple times and then their wings are, are ready to fly and they go for it. Set them free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are, tell us about some of the, the most interesting places that you've taken trailers or that you've heard of people taking trailers you've sold them. Well, cer- certainly the Rogue Overland trip was uh, was was one to remember. Um, but you know, it's not only because of some of the, the footage we're showing there, but just just the scene. I mean, you know, when you go to you know southern Utah and the Moab area, Capitol Reef area, it's just stunning. I mean, it's just it's it's absolutely incredible, and you can spend so much time. And every time we go into that region and kind of travel around, it's just like we need more time. I want to go there. I want to try that next. And, and that's, that's what's, what's challenges. Like you can just keep going and going and going. And so that's the luxury we have being out in the West here in Nevada and Utah and Arizona. There's a lot of BLM land. There's a lot of places that we can explore. Um, but that being said, you know, opening up our shop in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, had a chance to kind of spend some time out there and there's so much we want to do. Uh, we've been able to partner with a few groups out there, uh, Bill and Deb with Cotty Wample Overland have been awesome to work with. They're showing us some of the areas oh, of the Smoky yeah. Mountains. And uh, it, yeah, it's they're fantastic. And so they're helping us kind of, you know, understand that region a little bit more. Um, and we're doing a lot of events out there now, too. So it's it's fun to, to, to kind of on our side, too. We've been so focused on the West, you know, kind of get these products introduced to uh, to a, a customer base and and a, and a region out there. It's been, it's been a lot of fun for us. So there's a lot that we can do personally. I'll, I'll go anywhere where there's uh, fly fishing. So if I can find a lake <laughs> or a stream and can, can park it for a day or two and just enjoy being up in the mountains somewhere, you know, that's where I want to be. You got to come to, uh, to New York, to the Catskills region. Let's do it. <laughs> like, uh, He's yeah. adding days to your drive, Lauren. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. On the way to Knoxville, we'll go to New York. Right. Yeah. No, look up like the Roscoe, New York area. Some of the fly fishing is okay. is absolutely wild. It's that's fantastic. I mean, it's not yeah. not something I can say I've done, but I know people who have, and it looks amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this is it's so cool and I want to play with these things so badly. Um, Chris, what kind of questions? Right? I know you got places you want to go and you have I, personal vested interest in, uh, in the- no, I, I just, my, my thing is always like, uh, they, there are so many different iterations now of what I think of when I think of an off-road trailer, because, what you talked about before, like the forest river trailers, like that's what we've always thought of for camping trailers, right? Like just, just an RV trailer, but they're Mm -hmm. the expedition trailer you had compared to like an Opus. Like those are almost complete different ends of the spectrum where one is just literally this little box where everything fits and works, where the Opus is a little box that springs open and becomes so different. And then this, yeah. And then the track trailer is even totally. smaller, like, it, yeah. but yet springs yeah. open as well. Like it just. Yeah. So this is what's fun is that you get into the lifestyle. like, you know, some people, they want to be able to stand up inside. Right. And so it's like, yeah. Hey, when I wake up in the morning, I want to be able to stand up. I don't want to have to go outside, you know, put on my clothes or something like that. And so you get, you get an Opus that has a big pop-up inflatable tent, super family friendly vehicle, 40 gallons of water, tons of capability, high, high clearance, uh, you know, nice outdoor kitchen. Uh, but it's half tent, you know, and so yeah. some people love that because you're going to get that camping feel, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you're going to kind of feel the elements a little bit more. You're going to hear the wind and everything. And other people are like, heck no, I want to be in a hard sided, you know, right. I, want, I want metal around me all the way. And so <laughs> that's fine. Both are great. Right. It doesn't matter. But knowing kind of what works for you is uh, is what's important there, you know, and there's always that balance of of uh, size and weight because typically the bigger you go, the heavier it is, the harder it is to pull down a trail, get around curves, things like that. And the Opus provides that compact footprint, but you know, a lot of, a lot of interior living. So yeah, um, that's I'm, a little, about this stuff. Out. I'm a little short of six foot four and this is me inside of an Opus. Like uh, <laughs> I have to reach for the top of it. <laughs> yeah. The eight foot ceiling, you know, yeah, it's hard to legitimately yeah. it's up there. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's funny you, you mentioned like the the soft sides versus the hard sides because I think you and I were the small group uh, was that the third night of the rally where it was so windy 
we didn't have to listen to a tent flap at all. I slept inside the, the Sequoia and you slept inside your trailer. And everybody uh, else had some version of rooftop yeah. tent or something else. It was just yeah. like that I had, scene I had, that you know, we had the heater on, you know. Yeah, I didn't all, have that part. It was warm in there, you know, <laughs> take a warm tower, you know, it's yeah. fantastic. But, you know. Yeah, you can have both. And that's what's fun about, you know, having a trailer is, you, you know, you can you can be totally adventurous, you know, have all that gear, all that cool stuff, but have a little bit of luxury and comfort, too, you know, when it's when it's done right. And the fun thing about it is with a with a trailer, my favorite part, you know, is is being able to set up that base camp. And then if you want yeah. to go wheel, I go fishing, you know, my family stays you know, at the campsite, whatever it is, I can go around around. And then, you know, for a couple of days, two, three days, it's there. It's ready to go. Everything's set up. And so it's a lot easier to kind of um, get to your spot. Now, if you're running every day, you're packing up anyways. But if you are going to go to a spot and be for, you know, two, three days or longer, then it's nice to have your base camp set up and you can still detach and take your vehicle out. And then also when you want to go, you know, some people, I think this is what, what most people like really enjoy is like if they've been in a, in a rooftop tent or a truck or, you know, they have gear, they're always loading it up before they go on their trip, you know? Yeah. And when you have a nice trailer, it's set up, you know, all your cooking equipment's in there, all your gear's ready to go. You've cleaned it from last time. You throw the cooler on, put some food in there, grab some clothes, and you're off and running, you know? And so it, it makes it, you know, easier to do that one night trip if you want to yeah. go out for one night. You know, we've done that. I've taken my son. I was like, hey, let's go to Lake Mead tonight. And we just hooked up and took off, came back the next morning. What's no, not a big deal, you know? That sounds so, magical. So even, nice. even describing, like, yeah, you can leave it as base camp, but like, even if you're moving spots, like the ability to pack it all up again and have it, whatever dampness or anything that existed from the morning, like is not in the vehicle with you for the rest of that day. Like I've been on those yeah. trips where it just doesn't get dry in the morning and you're hoping you get to the next spot early enough that you can set up and dry it out before you have to get in it and sleep again. So. Yeah, yeah that's right. Only it worked like that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I just, anyway. <laughs> uh, what's, oh. what's in your personal garage these days? <laughs> well, nothing fits in the garage. Uh, <laughs> I feel you there. <laughs> in the driveway. Uh, so, well, I, you know, I tell you, I've had, I've had uh, my share of, of off-road campers. I've owned a, a few of them personally. Um, but now we have the luxury of having the business. We actually rent a lot of our units. And so we have a rental fleet. Uh, so I, if, if my garage is our warehouse and our shop, then I've got one of everything that we can get out. And so that's uh, that's one of the benefits. But it, it's so we get out, get to test them a little bit. We'll we'll use all the units. Um, I, I have a demo unit of everything we sell. And so uh, we get out there, we test it. We want to make sure it's right for our customer base. We understand it. Our technicians work on the units. Um, and so that way we're familiar with what's going on with them. Uh, and from the rental line, we certainly get some uh, some feedback, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, get some abuse periodically, um, so we see kind of everything that happens with them. Um, but it's 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 a lot of fun. If if someone hasn't we you know hasn't tried it before, the the rental opportunity is a great way to get out there, give it a shot. How does you know understand how your vehicle tows a camper? What's really important to you in terms of layout and functionality and features? You know, it gives people a good good trial run before making this type of investment. So it's a lot of fun to do that. Cool. And what are you driving? I'm driving a 21 Power Wagon. So the black one that was on the rally? Yeah, that black one. Yeah. So cool. there got my full size for when we need to tow some of those bigger vehicles. But uh, <laughs> it, it, it does pretty well on the trail, too. I just Seriously. I had to look up what the LX tow rating was, Russ. I didn't even know. <laughs> what is it? Can I? 6,500? Oh wow! I was gonna guess that's pretty well, fifty-two fifty yeah. or something. That's pretty good. That's the same as yeah. the GX. And well, I'll, I'll... what is the Alpina? What is the Alpina V8 <laughs> no capacity though? I was talking I mean, about. If I had to guess here, it's rated for zero, but in Germany, probably <laughs> like forty-two hundred pounds. There you go. <laughs> you know that's how they tend to do it. Yeah. What was? Didn't we figure out what the Miatas was forever ago? Uh, I don't think Mazda officially rates it to tow. Well, according to, oh, now I got to do math. Oh no, just Google convert. Uh, you don't have to math. Yeah, I know, but like my window froze. 
going from pounds to kilograms or vice versa? I'm going kilograms to pounds. So according yeah. to an Australia website, car, carsguide.au, it's 1,300 kilograms, which is just below or just over 2,800 pounds. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, no, that's its curb weight. That's 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 an <laughs> NC... That's an NC... Uh, with all the options on the folding hardtop, that's no, no, that was the B8. I don't know about the Miata. Oh, that's the B8. Oh. That's the Alpina. Sorry. Oh wow, wow, yeah. I thought you were talking about the Miata. I was like, get the fuck out of here. But then I was going yeah. right back to the size of the sidewalls on that car. Is yeah. where my mind went for twenty eight hundred pounds. Yeah, there's not much sidewall. No, but they are yeah. probably <sighs> reasonably stiff. But. Try to try to air those down to twelve. <laughs> it's, not, it's not exactly an yeah. e-rated tire <laughs> yeah god no oh man which is um, so many different variations of e-rated tires now like just the, the plies aren't always e, just because it's e now doesn't yeah. mean it's the same number of plies like they've started to do fuzzy math on it, well it's like treadwear rating yes yeah. up to the manufacturer you know um, Which I will, uh, I did suggest because uh, the Sequoia runs Toyos and the Lexus has the Open Country AT3s on them as well. And I just said to a friend the other day, he was like, "Hey, I'm starting to think about cars." I was like, "I'm, I'm probably Toyos for life until <laughs> something gets better." I, I uh, still enjoy. Them. You also have them. I also have them. <laughs> yep, I told you. And your dad, your dad had them on that 2500 too, right? Didn't he Dude, do like tons and tons my- of miles? My dad, my brother, and myself probably have 500,000 miles on Toyota Open Countries. On just three sets? Yeah. uh, No, probably. (laughs) I mean, probably only like five, you know? Okay. So that's a lot of mileage to get to 500,000. So, yeah. Um, Uh, So, Lauren, are you, uh, have you had the opportunity to to go to Australia to visit any of these suppliers? (laughs) Or. You trying to play not, it out. not in the pandemic not yet. times. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's it's on our list for sure, and uh, it's it, it'll be a, it'll be a fantastic trip. But I think you know, it's definitely on the horizon for us. We actually had a, uh, a an opportunity to to meet up with Ron Moo, and he uh, it's kind of a legend in Australia for doing you know kind of the the the, the travel trailer kind of caravan mm-hmm. uh, testing. He worked with some of our suppliers twenty years ago, and his son now. Trent Moon runs uh, Moon Tours. So, anyways, they they have a tour business in Australia. Get people into the outback, and uh, they invited us out. So, uh, you know, next time we or if we have a chance to get out to Australia, hopefully we can meet up with them and and uh, get to explore a little bit the real way. Australia seems like a good time for off roading. Yeah, <laughs> fishing too. You know, there it seems like there's plenty of places to go fishing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> trips that people go on down there. If it's, yeah, there's a lot you can do. That's for sure. I yeah. think I got the right guy. I found <laughs> yeah, yeah. the, the glory the of modern time. technology is Google. like you give me a name and a location, like I can get pretty close. Like there he is. Oh That's shit! Him. Yeah. Have, uh, of course, have it's in sub- a Land Cruiser. Have you submerged yeah. any trailer like that? That's a that's that's a T van. We have one of those in our shop right now. So yeah, that's the track T van. Fantastic trailer. Yeah. Ross, this one, like, this is exactly what I was talking about a little bit ago with the Opus, like how it just expands. This little thing gets so big. <laughs> like, yeah. It's really neat. It has a, it has a, a drop down deck. So that back hatch folds down in two pieces and then the top opens up and uh, it has this elevated deck that turns into a full annex. So we've taken it out with our kids and we'll put two cots in the rear there, um, have the queen size bed in the, in the cabin. And have plenty of room for the four of us and for a, a little trailer that's 2400 pounds you know dry uh that can sleep four people on the inside is unbelievable you know it's kind of all built together there so um that's a that's a lot of fun it's it's a really neat rig there you go that's oh with God. the uh with the built-in annex off the rear um and then there's an ensuite that attaches on the other side so you can get up go to the bathroom at night never leave your trailer it's nicer than my house so, <laughs> yeah it legitimately, dude, like he had it, uh, Lauren had one at the Moore Expo and I got in it and I was just like, how, where did all of this space come from? Yeah, that's crazy. 
and they they so they've been building that model that that T van for twenty over twenty years in Australia. The model for twenty years. So it's not a new model, right? They've oh, wow. continued to to expand on it and iterate on it, but um, they've been doing it for a long time. And so it's just it's just so well refined. You know, there's a lot of detail to it. Uh, great use of space. Everything is 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 well thought out. So um, you get some of that experience, you know, with these guys. It's appropriate that it was being towed by a seventy Sears Land Cruiser. No, hundred percent over decades. Oh, and that's a two door GX, a Prado. That's awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so on the topic of trailers, I want to gauge your one to ten. How horrible of an idea is this that I'm I'm proposing? So my budget for a trailer <laughs> is not what <laughs> one of these are. Uh, my budget for a trailer is probably one night's rental um, as, as something I want to own. So. There's Where a lot are you of free, going? <laughs> there's a lot of free pop-up campers from like the 90s and early 2000s around here that people buy and then just kind of abandon. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about just taking one, pulling the axle off, putting like a sheet of aluminum or some hard metal underneath it, and then affixing the good like independent suspension to the bottom of that. Good for you. <laughs> 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 it sounds like you have a great plan there, Ross. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is that the dumbest idea you've ever heard? Or the the first question uh, is, do you, do you have any here? fabrication experience? You know, um, <laughs> so, no, but here's the deal. I, I, you know, it's funny. I, I, I think, listen, there's so many ways you can do this, right? And it doesn't matter. If you've got some interest and experience in building your own trailer, go for it. Why not? You know, give it a shot. You know, um, I, you know, I, I, you know, maybe not be arrogant that it's as good as something else that's out there that's been doing it for 20 years, you know, right. <laughs> but, but listen, if you want, if you're the hobbyist, I tell people go for it. I have people come to my shop all the time. They just want ideas. I don't care. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to do a home built and throw a suspension on there, learn what's necessary to make it safe and roadworthy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do the research, talk to people there, make sure you have proper lighting on there. You have proper balance. Brakes. You know, you if do you understand how a chassis needs to be designed for this type of travel, uh, how the axle works, you know, make, you know, buy some good product, you know, that you can put on there. So, it, so it's roadworthy, but have fun, you know, um, you know, that type of stuff, you know, if, if you can get into a fabrication shop and, and use aluminum instead of wood, even better you know a lot of people build these home builds and they put up you know wood wood panels again easy to do but it's just not going to hold up when you start going down a washboard road um but hey go for it what what's your you know what's what do you have to lose you know exactly. give it a yeah. shot you know uh, just up so. the insurance policy and hope for the best there you go <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna is, is um is x grid are you gonna at some point sell components and i guess the follow-up question to that is uh, what's what's the durability like on these things? I mean, if somebody takes it on a on a trip like you guys were yeah. on with Rogue, I mean, yeah. if you do five of those, six of those a year, what you know? What's the reality of maintaining these things? Yeah, I'll start then. I'll come back to the components, but you know, the the stuff that we we carry, it really is designed to do those types of trips often and 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 all, you know all the time. Um, but again, there's degrees of that. Not all products we carry, I can say that. You know, we do have a different degree of products out there for different lifestyles. So if you're going real rugged and you know you're going to be off grid for a long period, you're maybe living out of it, um, and you know you know you're going to be doing some heavy washboard roads over and over and over and over again. It takes a toll on a trailer. It really does. And so um, with the right trailer, absolutely, it can hold up to it. Uh, the common, you know, maintenance items, alignments and tires and brakes, you know, uh, common things with propane systems and plumbing, you've got to keep updated. But the trailer itself should last a long time if it's if it's if it's well built that way. Um, but again, there's a different use case and there's a different trailer for every person. And so kind of keeping that in mind yeah. is important. Yeah. But, you know, and on the on the component side of it, um, we do a lot of outfitting for trailers. And so a lot of that crosses over to general overlanding and and off road. But we you know, we'll do we do we sell a lot of tents and, uh, you know, rooftop tents and awning, solar panels, fridges, lithium upgrades. We do a ton of power upgrades on our campers. Uh, You know, people I've got Nellis Air Force Base flying by, if you can hear it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool, actually. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's uh, I guess uh, something's going on at six o'clock doing drills outside. But anyways, yeah. um, so we we do a lot of like you know upgrades to power systems. Um, sometimes the trailers come one way, and that's what the manufacturer specs it out as, and so we'll take it to the next level in many cases. Um, you know, so, and we sell those components and our, our shop at Knoxville now is a full retail shop. So we've got rooftop tents in stock. We got awnings in stock and things like that. So we work with, you know, I camper, we work with Bush company, 230 Overland vehicle systems. You know, we've got some good products out there for people that are looking to get in. And if you just need the tent, cause you're going to throw it on a truck. Great. Go for it. You know, a few thousand bucks, you can get a really nice setup. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. And just to follow up the maintenance portion I, I suspect that a lot of it also has to do with the person behind the wheel as with everything yeah there's you know when you're towing a trailer there's more to think about right um when you're going down a narrow trail um you have you know 15 or 20 feet behind you that is a little bit wider than you in those turns and so keeping that in mind, yeah, you know, if you much easier to uh, to swipe up against rocks or, you know, get that uh, get that pinstriping from the brush and everything, you know, so kind of, you know, uh, obviously maintaining that. Um, but, you know, just just just, you know, being smart about it, too, you know, uh, making sure your bearings are well maintained um, and checking those, you know, um, on you know depend on the, the the frequency of your trips you know pretty often mm-hmm. so we recommend making sure your tires are, are well kept and that sort of thing because it, it does make a difference when you're you know out on your own away from any support and cell signal and everything you want to make sure that you're uh, capable of recovering yourself um and extracting yourself if you need to cool chris what else so you got good. No, I'm, I've literally just been rolling through just pictures. Watching videos. Yeah. I've been going through pictures and <laughs> videos. Ron, Ron's a pretty great guy from what I can tell. <laughs> his, <laughs> his chips are fairly epic. Uh, I mean, Australia always does that for me. Joel, Joel's aware of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Joel, Lauren, for your, your information, Joel's our buddy who lives in Australia. So he... he oh, uh, got it. Okay. Yeah. And because we record so late in the evening, it's like midday for him the next day. He normally yeah. sends us a message. So, uh, <laughs> well, let's, be, uh, let's go meet, meet Joel and Ron exactly. together. We'll go for it. I am on board. Joel, Joel uh, joins I us do on need a breakfast to, call. Yeah, <laughs> I do need to update my passport. But uh, other than that, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, that's about cool. all I got. I, I don't have anything else for you, Lauren. Like, you did, you did a good cool. job explaining it. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Well, I just, let's, let's get out there on a trail together again sometime. You know, that's yes. the best part about this. And, you know, meeting people like you guys out there, you don't know what to expect. You just have a, have a group of people together. And all of a sudden, you spend three, four days on a trail hanging out, experiencing some things you probably shouldn't, then uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a lifetime okay. of memory. Yeah. For, for me and my wife's daily and you and a rig that was 45 feet long, uh, I think we did just fine. <laughs> we did okay. We hung in with those other guys. Yeah. yeah. I did most of that stuff. <laughs> and now you're just a solid, Google's still thinking, 19 hours away. So... <laughs> <laughs> The American West is big. <laughs> Don't forget that Denver's only two thirds of the way to the coast. Yeah. Is that all it is? Yeah. It's only about 2,000 miles from here. You see, it's only six, it's like 700 miles from me. So, like, it's right. still a long way. Like, I, that's one day. That's a, yeah. that's a day's drive. You know? Denver's eight hours. Yeah. It's, it's no big deal. It's just. Yeah. The other 11 to get to Lauren is the hard part because it's the rest of the Rocky Mountains, Utah. Well, well, meeting up in Denver is nothing wrong with that, too. So, uh, you know, there's that's a great oh, place yeah. to go. So we can I, do that. I need to figure out Colorado better for BLM land. I, I used to joke that once you were west of Denver, everything got easier. I have not done well in Colorado um, for finding spots where I can camp and whatever. I need to. Utah's piece of cake. Arizona's piece yeah. of cake. Like, right. Colorado's right. tricky. You gotta, you gotta yeah. watch Colorado. Well, we got, we got Expo coming up here, so we'll, uh, we'll have to figure out, you know, Ooh. a route afterwards, you know, to do something there. Yeah, that's August, right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Wheels are turning. Chris yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah. 
Is, if I get the chance to tow one of these things, yes, I will be in Denver. <laughs> if, 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 if you make it out to Denver, you can you can you can tow one of our trailers. I'll, I'll have one set up for you. Yeah. All right. Chris just made late summer plans without his family's consent. I may, I may have made other late summer plans. Well, she was a part of that, one, so we're good. <laughs> but no, uh, I Lauren, we we will talk. We will chat. Awesome. Well, cool. sweet. Uh, I'm going to wrap up the show before Ross turns into a pumpkin. Um, you can rate review the show wherever you listen to podcasts. We're just about on everything. If we're not on the one you listen to, first of all, how'd you listen to this show? But secondly, send me a message so I can make sure that like, we're, we're sending the correct feed. Um, like, and subscribe. If you're on YouTube, we had some viewers tonight. I uh, appreciate that. You can follow Lauren. It's <laughs> at X grid campers, um, everywhere, right? Like it's Facebook, yep. Instagram. Um, yep. and then you can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. I don't know that I need to say Hooniverse on Twitter anymore because I don't think Jeff cares anymore. No. <laughs> so no, we, we could we probably go ahead and drop that one. Trying to get the Hooniverse Instagram back off the ground. The real Hooniverse. The real Hooniverse on Instagram. Yes. Definitely do that. But, uh, yes. Ross is no, not like the one from friends and I'm at overlanding dad. I love that I still say yours, but I say at in front of mine. Mm. I don't know why. Yeah, man. Yeah. Just a lot of episodes. That's why we do it. Yeah, it's just, uh, <laughs> it's just spitting it right back out now. Thank you so cool. much for coming on the show, Lauren. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, you guys. Nice to meet Enjoyed you. Enjoyed it. Appreciate you it. You bet.